How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at taking the Nexus 9000V and I'm going to walk you through the process of getting it up and running inside of EVNG. So for those of you that are going through the Nexus 9000V series for VXLAN, this technically should have been one of the first videos that I did, but for some reason I was a dork and didn't do it. So I'm going to walk you through the process here in this video. It's actually pretty easy. So we're going to go through a full setup, meaning I'm going to go into FileZilla, I'm going to connect to the server, I'm going to upload the image to the server, and then we're going to be able to find it on EVNG, then we're going to be able to pull it out as a node, then boot it up, and I'll show you how that process works so that we can get the, the bootstrapping of the, uh, the endpoint connected. So uh, the videos will come out kind of an out. Uh, uh, out of order, meaning that this video will come after the VLAN problem statement video, but before the actual rollout of the the rest of the content. But it'll be numbered 00, uh, zero I think. Yeah, it'll be 000 because it'll be the very first one, and in the playlist it'll be the very top. So with that being said, one of the first things we need to do, if you don't already have it, is you can go to Cisco, uh, <laughs> look up Cisco Modeling Labs, Cisco Learning Network, and it's 200 bucks for the personal edition or the PE version. The cool thing about that is that when you have the, uh, when you pay the license for it, which is the 200 bucks, you don't actually have to download CML. You can just download all the images and download the QCOW2 image for it because you're going to be running it inside of KVM, which is what you need for this to work is Eve is a Linux box, so you're running KVM. So you do that, and once you've downloaded the Nexus 9000V image, I'm using the 9.2.2, and I'll put that in the description below of what I'm actually leveraging. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at actually uploading it and what that process looks like. It's actually not very difficult to do. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up FileZilla. FileZilla. And... Give that a second to pull up. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy over. Now, I already have the image. Uh, I've already got myself in the correct directory for where all of my images sit. I've got a lot of stuff in here, as you can see, but this is over a lengthy period of time that I've been building this stuff out. So I've got a lot of stuff here that I've added, and these are all things that I've added to this deployment. So if I look down here and I look for the Nexus image which is where is nexus 9000 v uh, let's see where are you hiding nexus 9000 v so we have this now i have 9.3.4 code and i have 9.2.2 code so as you can see the one thing you'll have to do regardless of which image you ran in um throughout our series i use 9.2.2 code i don't use 9.3.4 so there is a newer version now. There's 10.0. I have not downloaded that yet, but that's where we're at with that. So I'm going to take 9.2.2 and I'm going to upload it. And we got to make sure that your image name is SATA A QCAL2. So S A T A A dot QCAL2. I will put in the description that where the actual URL for the Nexus 9000V aspect. So in here, I'm going to type in 10.255.1.11, which is going to be this server's IP address. I'm going to put in here root because we're logging in via the CLI. The password is going to be eve, and the port is going to be 22, so we're using SFTP. I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, that's fine. Now we're here. First thing I'm going to do is click on this little question mark. Come down here to OPT. Scroll down to Unit Lab. Double click on Add-ons. And then click on QEMU. As you can see, I've got quite a few images already uploaded to this box. I'm literally going to come over here, expand it out, just so that we can see everything. I'm going to click on this guy right here so it's blue. And I'm literally just going to drag and drop it over to QEMU. And it's going to go ahead and upload to the server. It's going to take a couple of seconds to do that. So I will just pause here and we'll just hang out for 10 seconds. As you can see, it doesn't take long, especially if you've got a decent network to connect via. All right, so that was my alert that all files have been transferred successfully. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'm gonna right click in here and go to Node. And then if we come down here, we can see Nexus 9000 V is now there. And if we click on it, give that a second to, why did that bug out on me? Let me resynchronize. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, actually I know why. I had some other things going on in the round in the background. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually learning NSXT at the moment, and so I uh, had accidentally deployed an NSXT device with the same IP address as this guy, so I had to go delete it. And uh, I'm running into problems with NSXT, but um, that's a whole other set of set of problems in itself. So we're gonna right click in here, go to Node, come down here to Nexus 9000V, and there we go. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to keep this as itself. I'm just going to give this the identification of NXOS1. We have that set up, situated with the, the appropriate image. Two CPUs. We have 8 gigs of RAM, 8 interfaces. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Now this is EVE Community version. I'm just doing this because I haven't already set this particular host up with that. So I'm going to actually click on here and click on Start. And now I'm going to come over here and open Secure CRT. And what will end up happening is we'll see how this is going to start to boot up. Now, as you can see, it's going to boot up here. And this is going to take some time. So as it goes through its boot up process, it'll go through this. And once it gets through this initial steps, what will end up happening is you'll start to see the image load. It'll start off at zero and then in increments of like eight megs. It'll upload the 1200 meg file that it needs to boot from, and then it'll go through the boot up process. And this does take some time. This is a very first boot up. So, this is brand new. This device has not been previously configured or anything like that. So, it's cool in this respect. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it hang out here. I'm actually going to let the video play, and then I will um, basically fast forward through this section. And we'll go from there. Very weird that I didn't get the the prompt for the, the boot up. I never saw it actually load the image, which is weird. But I'm going to go ahead and type in yes to turn off power on auto provisioning. So it's going to disable Pope. And then it's going to go ahead and do its uh, setup here. It's going to take some time for this to happen. But... Once it does, we'll be in pretty good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and let this kind of hang out. Once we're uh, past this part, I'll bring you guys back in, but I'm going to let the video continue to play. And that took all of like literally like three seconds. So it's going to ask us, do we want to uh, uh, enforce secure passwords? I'm going to type in no. And then what's going to be the password? I'm just going to choose admin and admin again, something simple. And we're not going to uh, enter the initial configuration dialog. And after a couple seconds here, we should get a prompt for login, which we do admin and admin, like so. And then I need to type in dir, go to global config and type in boot. NXOS boot flash, and then grab this right here. Grab the image right there, paste it, hit the enter key, and now it's gonna perform the image verification and compatibility check. And once we have that process done, I wanna be able to save the config just like that. And it'll be a copy run start here in just a second, once I change the host name. But that's pretty much it. There's really not much more to it than this. And you have to do this per instance. So if you've got 10 of these VMs deployed, you're going to need to do this process 10 different times. So keep that in mind as you are going forward. So yeah. All right. So if we were to do a quick show run, you're going to see at the very bottom here if we come all the way down, you'll see this command right here. I'm gonna go ahead and say copy, run, start. 
and that's going to save the config. And that's literally it. So once you go through this process, anything that you need to do to get this particular device up and running is first off going to be a feature install. So if you type, click on type in feature and then you do a spacebar, these are all features that if you want to use them, you're going to need to turn them on. So we obviously will take a look at doing quite a few of these as we continue moving forward. But um, this is basically where I'm at with all this deployment. Um, that's pretty much it. There is some other things that need to be done, but I will walk you through those as we are hitting each video. We will walk through what is needed, what is you know what I type in, things like that. So that's pretty much that. I do plan on doing some additional content down the road. I actually, truth be told, I actually do want to go through the process of taking 9000V deeper and learning it better, and uh, almost like I did for CCIE route switch. You know, just going through the technology and making sure I know how to do it all and that type of stuff. But at the same point in time, I have found, uh, I wouldn't say a newfound interest, but it's definitely something that's new to me. And I am really want to put some time and effort into it, which is NSX and data center virtualization. You know, get better at those, get really good at data center, get really good at NSX. That's kind of my, my you know, Cisco has been great, but I really want to pivot into VMware. And... Uh, go that direction with it. So with that being said, um, I still need to do the Cisco topics because at some point in the future, I will probably get, you know, CCMP data center. And this was a really big help in trying to learn how VXLAN works and stuff like that and understand service insertion better. So uh, with all that being said, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, take it easy.